There's a lot of heavy basketball shoes out there, but no one wants to play in the cinder block. So this is a breakdown of the five lightest shoes that came out of 2022. Let's check them out. Getting the list started at number five is the Nike Kyrie Low 5. These shoes weigh in at 372 grams for a size 10 and a half. Crazy light, and of course the list is only gonna get lighter from there. So these released back around like March, I wanna say, a little bit after the Kyrie Infinity, and they're gonna be retailing for $110. I know that some colorways are gonna be like 120 it looks like, but that's gonna be the second most expensive shoe to make this list. So as you can see, we are kind of in for like a more affordable top five on this video for the top five lightest shoes. And that kind of checks out because sometimes that just shows you that like, you know, they're using less materials to save money. And the reasons always, you know, of course can vary, but we're also gonna be checking out like the performance side for all these shoes today. So you won't even have to, you know, wonder about that. So diving right into the performance side for the Kyrie Low 5, I'll kind of point this out now before I get any further into the video. I actually blew through my Kyrie Low 5s, the, like the white colorway that I had. And those were, those were actually the shoes that I also recorded in. So all the action shots aren't actually going to be of this colorway. Just kind of wanted to clear that up before we get going. But now starting off with the cushioning, the Kyrie Low 5 has some foam in the midsole that's meant to feel soft and smooth, which is there to help keep you low to the ground and enhance sensation on your court feel. You also get a top-loaded zoom air unit that's under the ball of your foot that's there to respond to your force with a burst of return energy with every step. And that's pretty much, you know, how Nike lays it out there. And to be straight up, honestly, I wasn't that impressed with the cushion on the Kyrie Low 5, just like the overall comfort. Like the footbed doesn't have very much of like, you know, a padded feel. They are a little bit stiff from the jump. And then you do have that zoom air unit that's in the forefoot, but it doesn't really change like the actual feel of the shoe that much. Like the Kyrie Infinity is super bouncy and you get a lot of really good energy return from that zoom air unit that they use. I just haven't felt that on the Kyrie Low 5s, but the cushion is just a little bit thinned out in my opinion, but that's not the only piece or that's not the only place that these are thin. Like the upper is gonna be made out of a super thin textile. It's actually like semi-transparent in a few different places. And that's just what helps to contribute to the weight being as low as they do all the way down to 372 grams. Like you'll notice me look at the support though a little bit closer on all of these shoes today just because whenever you have some lighter models with materials that will be on the thinner side it's just like in general you normally like to have some like support features kind of come along to kind of add to that and the Kyrie Low 5 does get it so on this colorway it's actually going to be black you can see it in yellow on the other pair that I had but the laces are going to feed through this like interlocking band in the forefoot and whenever you tighten them that actually like is there to help pull your foot down to just keep you comfortably secure inside the shoe and then lateral containment is just like no issue on these I haven't felt any give and the heel containment's really nice too like you have that arch or just like that curve back there to eliminate any heel slippage. So there's none of that in these. Support and the materials are definitely both checked on the Kyrie Low 5. But finishing off with the traction, the Kyrie Low 5 uses a computer, computer generated outsole pattern that lets you quickly accelerate, slow down, and change direction, helping you feel in control of your movement. And this is going to be a similar design or pattern from the Kyrie Infinities, and they do play, you know, about the same, which is good just nothing too special. Like I wouldn't really call it a strength or a weakness on this model. So, I mean, the Kyrie Low 5 though, I mean, it's pretty good. They definitely aren't bad. They're not gonna be great, but they are super light. 372 grams to be exact, which is the only true reason they ended up being the fifth lightest shoe from 2022. Coming in at number four is the Nike KD Tray 5X. These weigh in at only 364 grams for a size 10 and a half. And this is the 10th model to release from Kevin Durant's sub shoe line with Nike. And the KD Tray 5X is one of my favorite shoes on the list whenever it comes to appearance alone. And a lot of that comes from the strap. Like I just think this is such a clean design, but I don't wanna waste too much time on that. So now let's go ahead and just take a look at how they play. As always, we'll go ahead and start off with the cushioning. And something that I like about the shoe that you do see more and more basketball models kind of starting to do now, is just like labeling on the shoe, the Type of stuff that's being used. So as marked out on the upper, the KD Tray 5X uses a zoom air unit in the forefoot that's meant to give you a springy and responsive sensation. And it doesn't actually mention it in the tech specs, but on the midsole, like on the heel, you have some Nike Renew text. I'm assuming that's probably some of the foam that was used on this model too. I mean, for a cheaper shoe, the cushioning honestly plays pretty nice. Like you're still gonna have, you know, that balanced feel. And this is actually the first shoe on the list that we have a durometer reading from. And that's just a tool that we kind of use to test out like how firm or soft the midsole feels. And these were reading in at a 39 that's right on average for basketball shoes so cushioning honestly is a really is a really nice spot for this model but now moving on to the materials and the support you are going to have a few different materials that you can actually see kind of going on with the upper so that lighter blue portion that's like around the ankle and around like the heel a little bit more essentially like just like the collar of the shoe that's more of a like plush feel to add to the comfort of this model and then the slightly darker blue that's underneath that kind of running up the toe it's going to be more of a mesh feel to give you to keep these like durable just to hold the shoe intact and then once again you are 
are gonna have some nice support features that show up on the KD Tray 5X. Like the strap, of course, is going to be there, kind of running across the middle of the foot. But along the heel is like kind of built into the midsole sole of the shoe is that orange KD disc. And that's just kind of there to help keep your foot more secure. But to finish off with the traction, the KD Tray 5X has more of like a random traction pattern, or at least, you know, that's kind of what it looks like. But the setup's actually inspired by sound waves to kind of tie in KD's love of music. Just like last year's shoot, they did that too. I thought that was pretty cool. But traction is honestly like the highlight. It's arguably the highlight of this model. The grip on the floor is just so nice. And doing our squeak test, I mean, you can pretty much hear all the noise that they're making, and that's exactly how they play. Like, the grip has been solid. I haven't had any, itch, any issues with these collecting dust either. either. Jeez, can't talk. I haven't had any issues with these collecting dust either though, but I honestly kind of do play on a pretty clean court. But sometimes, I mean, shoes with like that much stick initially can attract some dust. Just haven't had any issues with that yet. But once again, you know, KD's line delivers another great shoe to hoop in. One of my favorite performers on this list for sure, but it's also one of the lightest shoes that you can get on the market from the year, which is what puts them on number four on my list. Coming in at number three for the top five lightest shoes on the market from 2022 is the Under Armour Future X2. These weigh in a few ticks lighter than the KD Tray 5X at 356 grams for a size 10 and a half. So this is the second shoe to release from that Under Armour Future X line. It's so like this second model is gonna retail for $120, but that does stay the same as last year's model, so no price jump there. And honestly, I do th think the appearance kind of took a step backwards this year. Obviously, that's subjective. I'm just kind of mad that they lost the strap, but we'll leave that alone and we'll just go ahead and get right into the review. But first, again, this is going to be a different colorway on screen than what you're going to see the action shots that I prepared for, but okay. Now we're ready to go. So starting off with the cushioning like we always do, the Future X2 gets some UA Flow cushioning technology that is meant to be super light and also bouncy. And I'll say this, UA Flow has been kind of like hit or miss. It really is, it was like really soft in the Curry 8s and that was like the first time that I played it in a setup using that exact cushioning tech. But since then, like, I mean, the Flow setup is just like, all right, I guess. Like the Curry 9, the Future X, the Future X2, they've all had a pretty stiff feel from the jump. I'd expect some break in time on like this model right here if you're gonna be getting them. But the Curry 10, they loosened up a little bit better, so maybe Under Armour's starting to kind of figure it out. But I mean, yeah, these are going to be, you know, pretty balanced for the cushioning setup, though. But most of the padding is just going to come from that sock liner having a plush feel and less from like, you know, the actual soft feel underneath your foot. But moving on to the materials and the support, you kind of have a split setup here. So you're going to have like this lightweight mesh in the upper or lightweight mesh on the upper that's going to be in the front half of the shoe, going to be paired with a TPE blend sock liner, and that's going to show up on the back half of the shoe. And the mesh in the Future X2 is definitely a little bit more durable like the texture is more rough compared to what was used on the future x ones but support definitely checks out and with these shoes only weighing 356 grams that is pretty important and then you do have a few other support features on there to kind of go along with that and now i kind of wish i had my other pair because you can really see like this blue midfoot band that like just runs underneath the upper that is actually tied into the like the lacing loops into the whole lacing system it's just on orange it just blends exactly into the shoe so that's not going to be super helpful there but these have a great on court feel for both the materials and the support though no issues at all but finishing off with the traction these are going to have a durable ua flow outsole that is meant to provide a better feel you can cut start and stop faster than ever before and of the all the end of, of all of the five lightest shoes that made this list these hands down have the best traction. And it's like, that's not even a knock to the other shoes. Just like UA Flow outsole, it just has insane bite on the court. That being said, they do collect a little bit of dust. So if you're playing in like, I don't know, an abandoned warehouse, these might not pan out that well. But on a clean to semi-clean court, these are just amazing. Now Under Armour calling these a durable setup, I guess that kind of depends. Like they work great inside. This foam is like very soft. It doesn't hold up well outdoors at all. But I mean, on the inside, these have just been super solid. But above all, but above all else, they've just been light as a feather, but only the third lightest feather, which is what puts them at number three on the list. Finishing off the year as the second lightest shoe to release from 2022 is the Nike Precision 6. These were nearly a dead tie with the lightest shoe on this list, weighing in at 350 grams for a size 10 and a half. And not only are these essentially the lightest shoe, they're also the cheapest shoe on the list, retailing for only $75. And it doesn't get much lower than that whenever it comes to like Nike basketball shoes. And these have a really clean design. I got that like black and red, like bread colorway, and these sort of give off like a Kobe vibe. I'll say, I mean, one of my favorite shoes on the list whenever it comes to appearance alone, but 
we'll go ahead and bypass that right now and go ahead and start looking at these for more of the performance side. So checking out the cushioning first, the Nike Precision 6 has a sculpted foam midsole meant to feel soft and supportive. And these also have like a plush foam in the collar and in the tongue to just kind of enhance that comfortable feel. So I mean, pretty simple on the cushioning features, even though it is Nike, you're not gonna see any of that like, you know, Air Max, Zoom Air, Zoom Strobel, some of the additional tech that, that will show up in more expensive lines. Like I said, $75, pretty cheap there. So they don't really go all that deep into it. And once again, though, this is gonna be a balanced setup. So you shouldn't notice much of a difference from like the forefoot to your heel. And while it's not gonna be like super dense or like padded for the cushioning, the rest of the sock liner is just like, and just like the interior padding on the shoe. I mean, it does feel nice. And I mean, I'm not saying like, it's not saying much, but of the four shoes so far, I probably would take the Precision 6 whenever we're talking about just comfort alone. Well, maybe them and like the KD Tray 5X are kind of like right there. But I mean, looking at these from like the materials and the support side now, kind of leaving the cushion, uh, leaving the cushion behind, the upper is going to be mostly made out of like a thinner textile, especially in the front half where you're going to have those like, you know, black and red arrows. And along with that are going to be some no-so overlays for some added durability. And if you look at the midsole, you can actually see like some funky cutouts. It's just like some like different designs there, but there's actually a reason for that. So a portion of the midsole is visibly cut out to help reduce the weight of the shoe. And you know, clearly it works. Here they are, and the weight's all the way down to 350 grams. And I mean, you're still gonna see some nice support pieces that show up on this model too, like you've seen on some of the other ones. So first is gonna be this updated lacing or this updated lace positioning in the midfoot. So the laces, you're gonna see them kind of feed through those like red loops and tightening that just helps get your foot locked into the shoe. And then on that white spike for the midsole, you're gonna see a little bit of a rise there and a little bit there. And that's just gonna help like keep your foot from like shifting outside of the footbed. So honestly, no struggles with the lateral containment, heel slippage, just anything support related and the materials play nice too. But wrapping it up with the traction, these are gonna have a herringbone traction pattern that is there to provide multi-directional grip. And the rubber even like wraps up the insides of the forefoot to give you more traction on the edges. And I mean, these have just been biting the floor really well. Like you can hear them making a ton of noise during our squeak test. So that just kind of helps confirm the grip on these. So honestly, after not playing in any of the previous models from this line, that won't happen again. The Nike Precision 6, it got my attention from the performance side, but even more than that, they got my attention due to just how light they feel and play, which is what earns them a spot as the runner up to the lightest shoe from 2022. Rounding out the list as the lightest shoe to hoop in from this year is the Curry Hover Splash. These shoes weigh in at a teetering three, 348 to 350 grams. It's in that ballpark, but I went ahead and gave it to them. So these released back in July for $110. For those of you who don't know, this is Steph Curry's first budget-friendly model to release with his new branding. A few years back, they did like a whole rebrand with Curry and gave him a new logo. Just a new way they launch his shoes and how they look. And personally, I love it. I also love Steph Curry, but at least this is a top five lightest video. So you can't really call me biased for putting Curry's at the top. Check the numbers, I, I have the proof. All right, back on track. Uh, actually not yet. Literally, how is the Curry Hover Splash 2 out already? The first pair released this year, and they just threw the second model in at the back end of the year. Like I actually just ordered them and got them in. That's so confusing to me. Either way, okay, let's just, Let's just get to the performance side for these. So starting off with the cushioning, just as the model name implies, these are gonna get a hover cushioning setup. And that's gonna be like kind of marked out on the midsole. And that's meant to give you a more responsive feel and reduce impact for your foot while giving you good energy return and also helping propel you forward. So, I mean, we are in the last shoe now. I can kind of start to like, you know, relate them back to some of the other five that we've covered so far. For comfort, I mean, these are gonna be better than the Future X2 and the Kyrie Low 5. But I mean, the Precision 6, KD Tray 5X and the Curry Hover Splash, they all kind of sit on that like next tier up. Still, I mean, don't expect anything over the top, but overall the Curry Hover Splash feels nice for comfort alone. But moving on to the materials and the support, these have an ultra breathable mesh upper engineered with 3D print for added durability and abrasion resistance. And it does have like a thinner feel, but not like too thin. And the red on there, it, you know, it kind of looks like snake skin on this model. It's that 3D print thing. That's just like an overlay to kind of help with the durability mainly. And I, honestly, I don't know how I missed this the first time that I reviewed these shoes, but you have like a yellow midfoot band kind of tied into the lacing system to give you a more secure feel. And I mean, there is still a little bit of give to the upper, but it hasn't been like concerning enough for me to really dock them on like the support category. But finishing it off with the traction, honestly, it's never really been Under Armour's MO to go with like kind of a set or like an organized traction pattern, but these get a durable rubber outsole designed for enhanced traction and grip for outdoor cords. And I mean, I think these like play, this is like a really nice shoe to hoop in outdoors, especially with the cushioning being soft enough to protect your foot on a harder surface. Surface. You know, even with, you know, the more randomized kind of like wavy pattern, these definitely have some bite. Like we did our squeak test on these and you can just hear them making noise. And that's nothing new from Under Armour. Like I was already bragging on the future X2 traction, but these are, you know, honestly probably going to be second best from this list. 
And I mean, the Curry 8s, the 9s, the Under Armour Future X, the Future X2, and the ones that we have here. I mean, honestly, Under Armour is just like killing the traction game right now. But this shoe specifically, these killed the light game. So if you're looking for a basketball shoe that's crazy light, about as light as it gets, well, here it is. That wraps up my list of the top five lightest basketball shoes from 2022. Thank you guys for taking some time to watch. And if you're interested in buying any of the shoes that we hit on today, we're going to have some links down below or in our bio. Feel free to check that out. Also, as you can see, we did just drop some new baller merch. We're rolling out a few different designs. Hopefully, I'll have those in to show you, but it's super clean. I think it might be sold out on our website right now. We're working on getting that back in stock, but feel free to go and check it out. we got a lot of cool different designs on there, but that's going to wrap up this review. Till next year. Peace.